the number one team in the country against the Hokies who are eight and two Virginia Tech won the toss they deferred so John Mahler up will tee it up and Andre Johnson and Kevin Beard will drop back deep Larry Coker a perfect 10 in his rookie season as a head coach of the hurricane one more win Rose Bowl and a national championship game Mahler ups kick a line drive Gore and now some confusion Johnson touched it he picks it up and Andre Johnson weaves through traffic and he got across the 20. That's where Miami will go to work. Ken Dorsey, obviously a Heisman Trophy candidate. There's his numbers. Coming off another excellent game last week. A three touchdown performance. 22 scoring tosses for the year. 20 year old has done everything that Miami has asked him to do. But the thing they want to do right now is just ease into this game. Get the nerves settled down. Don't make any critical mistakes. They'll work from the 22 yard line. Portis, the tailback, will get the call. Portis trying to weave his way through the Hokies defenders, and he does. He is slippery. Gets out to the 28 yard line. He's got a great line in front of him. Probably the best in the business as a group. McKinney, an All American. Wilkins, Romberg, Bibla, and Gonzalez also an All American by the football news this week. Portis, the tail. Najee Davenport is a fullback. Johnson and Jones are starting wideouts, and Jeremy Shockey is a great tight end. Joaquin Gungatalis, one of the leaders, one of the captains. He's the right tackle. He and Shockey lined up that way. Dorsey now trying to talk to his troops. It'll be Portis again. And Portis in the clear. First down run across the 35, out to the 36-yard line. The Hokies defensively. Hugh is a great one inside. He and Beasley are a couple of hosses. Colas and Davis on the outside. The linebacking core, Taylor, their leading tackler. Bob talked about him. Welch, the linebacker. Daniels is more of a rover. He's only about 190 pounds. Whitaker, Pyle, McAdam, and Austin in the secondary. It's a first down, Miami, on its own 36-yard line. And Dorsey's first throw of the day. Across the middle and cut hands by Shockey, the tight end, all the way out near midfield. And did you see him with those meat hooks? Big, Just sucked that thing in there. Big throw and catch. First completion of the day for Dorsey. Miami's made a couple of first downs. Dorsey gets off the line of scrimmage without a hand on his back. That's a perfect throw to the outside. Virginia Tech is in the top six in every defensive category in the nation. This is a good defensive team and a very aggressive one. Pick up the 14, another first down. And now it's Portis off the left side behind McKinney and company. And he got three, almost four, before Taylor made the tackle. Our Dodge game solution. Well, Bob. Miami just keep on rolling 124 points the last two games. And defensively forced the quarterback, Grant Knoll, to beat him through the air. Special teams are special for Virginia Tech and pressure Dorsey. They got to get in, they got to make him move his feet, and they got to knock the ball loose from him and get some turnovers. Frank Beamer is 15th year here in Blacksburg, and he's done a great job of this program. Second down and seven. The Canes in Virginia Tech territory. Dorsey, the quick toss outside, and another nice catch. This one a one-hander by Daryl Jones, short of the first down, but that's two great catches, one by the tight end, now by his wideout. Well, it's just uh, Miami knows this team. They know each other very well. Judge Jadzinski, uh, the offensive coordinator, Rob was telling us earlier in the week, they're very tough. We know them, and they know us. We know they're going to come after us. There's Rob right here. He says, we know they're going to come after us and try to make us uh, drop the ball in the backfield. And they, they've uh, tried it already a couple of times. Dorsey getting rid of the football. Tops of the Big East on third down conversions and three wideouts on third and three for Dorsey. Throws complete to Sands. He's got a first down. He lost it. And Virginia Tech's covered it. Ben Taylor, the linebacker. And there's the turnover story that Bob started a couple of minutes ago. It's already come to fruition. There's their leader. Taylor with a fumble recover. Going to catch the ball. The first guy doesn't get it. And the second guy, that's 34. That's Welsh, the middle linebacker, that knocks the ball loose. They made a living on turnovers and special teams here in Blacksburg. There's the turnover margins. Miami tops in the country. Virginia Tech's in the top 10. They get the first big defensive play of the afternoon. Here's Jones. Across the 40 
to about the 41. Grant Knoll is the guy that had to fill the huge shoes left vacant by Michael Vick's departure to the NFL. He's done a heck of a good job with it. He has, and they don't ask him to do a lot. He's not, uh, he's at the other end of the spectrum <laughs> as far as fleet of foot. That's right. With Michael Vick, he doesn't move around much, but they don't ask him to do much. They want him to run the football and then maybe throw some deep ones. Jones got about five. On second down, they'll give it to him again. Trying to weave his way through the Miami defense. He's going to be a couple yards shy of the first down. Offensively, Demasi, a former walk-on, is their leader at center. Davis Owens, Grove, and Winsek are the front wall, and they're a good blocking unit, especially for the ground game of Jones and Ferguson. Davis and Johnson are the wideouts. Slokowski is the starting tight end, but they use two tight ends a lot. Brown and Wynn is the other. There's Jones, and he now wears Michael Vick's number. Sometimes he looks like him out there. He's quite a freshman. Third down and two. Play action, goal, plenty of time. Oh, he sailed one. That is tight end Slokowski out there in the pattern, and he threw that one a mile high. He had him, and that's just uh, some nerves. No is a redshirt junior, so this is his fourth year in the program, but even the old-timers have nerves. <laughs> On the 1st of December against the number one team in the country, it could happen to anybody. Vinny Burns, number 38, set to punt. And that's Bill Buchanan back deep, and look out for him. Frank Beamer said, we're going to kick it to him because we think that we can make the tackle on it. So we're going to kick it high to him. Well, this one ain't high, though. It's not high. It's just the opposite. Buchanan on a bounce, and he got one block. He got a crushing block on the corner, but he only got about four on the return. <laughs> What a hit that was. Chris Campbell put on, but it didn't free up his punt return, man. Back in Blacksburg, let's check in. Third man on our team, Lynn Swan. Swanee. Thank you, Brad. The theme of this game is respect. Miami never thought they got enough of it at the early part of the season, and then after almost losing to Boston College, but they got it when they had convincing wins against Syracuse and Washington, the number one in everybody's book. Frank Beamer is using respect for the theme of his ball game. He says everyone's talking about Miami, what they have to do for a national championship. No one's talking about Virginia Tech and what they can do to win this ball game. He says we need to get respect, but the only place you get it is on the football field, and that's what they're going for today, Brad. No doubt about it. They already came up with a turnover to stop a Miami march, but it was three and out, and the Canes get it right back. Miami first down from the 25. And here they come. They load up. A blitz on a run, and Portis ran right into it. Ryan Welch, who caused that fumble earlier, makes the tackle on Portis. And Taylor, who recovered that fumble, talked with us about, uh, you know what? Miami's not in the Rose Bowl yet. Yeah, I saw them driving up here, you know, the game day, everything. Yeah, it's kind of like they have everything set up here. They, you know, I'm sure they're packing their roses and everything like that. You know, I, I'm looking forward to uh, them not being able to break cases out. <laughs> He's a throwback. He is. Second down at seven. Dorsey got hit as he threw, but he delivers a strike to Jones. Jones got the first down. And Dorsey's a perfect four for four. Dropping to throw his fifth pass. Over the middle. He's got his man. And it's Najee Davenport. And he laterals to Portis. I think it was a forward lateral, though. And Portis down to the 24. They threw a flag. There is a flag, yeah. As Miami comes up with the little ad lib there that's going to cost him. John Smith is our referee. Kenny Dorsey's trying to tell him, ref, wasn't a forward lateral. We'll wait and see. They're coming back. And that, it'll come back from where the point where the lateral was made. Here's a look for us. Yep, that's Just forward. a little. Just a couple feet. This is something that they do occasionally in practice. And it's frowned on by the coaches. <laughs> Kids love it. But yeah. Because most of the time it ends up in a fumble. Illegal forward pass. Offense. The penalty is from the spot of the illegal pass. Five yards. It's not a. Will be a first down. Not a serious penalty because it's only five yards from the spot. And, the, you know, the, the, uh, the chance is worth it if you, uh, <laughs> if you, you know, if you could have got a touchdown or a long gain from it. That's the, that's the player's outlook. That guy doesn't think that way. Yeah. So it's back at the 46-yard line. Two tight end set for the Canes. This is their second offensive possession. And it's Dorsey, a three-step drop, and Shockey again.
Dorsey's perfect so far, and Shockey's got a first down at the 40. Well, the passing game is there. There's single coverage all over the secondary. Reason being, the Hokies are coming after Dorsey. Not on this time, but usually the linebackers are blitzing from the middle or from the outside. The safeties or the linebackers are coming. But there are single coverage. They're taking chances that their guys can cover, or if they can, to knock the ball loose. So it's a first down at the 40-yard line. Nine yards a pop on first down. Nice protection and Dorsey going long. Broken up. Larry Austin at the goal line got a hand in front of Andre Johnson. That was good throw, good coverage, just a good play by Austin. And that's some of the shots that Miami needs to take. Austin is only 5'9". Little stop and go there. Johnson 6'3". The ball could have been a little bit further. I think it could have been caught. Maybe a little bit further, a little sooner. First incompletion. Those are the, ch are the chances that the Hokies are willing to take. Now they go back to Portis. Oh, he ran into a wall named Pugh. David Pugh, number 71, stood him up, and it's going to be third and long, Miami. This is a confident Virginia Tech team. Confident because of the years past, they've beaten Miami, like we said, five or six times. Miami hasn't won here since 1992, and no Hurricane player on this team has ever won on this field. And now the crowd coming to life. Three wide receiver grouping as Sands joins him in a slot. Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator, looking on, hoping his Hokies can come up with a stop. They bring the house after Dorsey. Throwback screen, though, and he's got blockers in front. And it's Portis down the sideline and all the way to the 20-yard line. Great call and a great play. Everybody was coming, as you mentioned, Brad. Just roll away and throw it back. Forty is uh, Taylor, 28 is Cobb. Roll away and throw it back. Now, the thing that saves us, there's only one guy left to make the tackle, and that's Austin. They had sent McAdam, too, the rover, and he's the guy that got the hit on Dorsey, but because of that, that left downfield open 20 yards for Portis. And now they give it to Clinton on the ground, and he gets a tough three yards as Pyle made the stop. <laughs> this, this Virginia Tech team, is not laying back and waiting for Miami <laughs> offensively to knock them out like they did the last two weeks. Scoring 124 points. Bud told us yesterday, Foster, he says, hey, we're going to come after them. You know, and they know that. And our guys on the outside have got to do a good job covering those receivers. Lunch pail kind of guys. That's the guy that carried the lunch pail this week, which is the highest defensive honor you can have on this football team. Second down and eight, Dorsey. Quick slant, complete. He still has only one incompletion, but he's still about three yards shy of the first down. Daryl Jones made the catch. There's two guys out there lined up for Miami. They both come to the inside. Wells gets back out. He's a linebacker. They're covering him from the inside out. If one of those guys would have just ran a fade, there had been no, no defensive back covering the receiver. 62 yards so far and in the red zone. Miami's been in there 54 times this year, and they have 37 touchdowns and 10 field goals to show for it. And we got a timeout. Virginia Tech's had it only three plays in this quarter, and Miami's had it 15 plays for 110 yards. But a fumble negated what looked like a scoring threat. The first time they had it, now they come up to another third down and four on the 10th play of this drive. Big play here, and they're all at the line of scrimmage. There is nobody deep. Look for a blitz here. Jockey, the tight end in motion. They pump fake it to him. They go to the corner. Not quite. Off his fingertips. Nice disguise by Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator. Everybody was up there faking blitz, and everybody dropped off. Jockey's going to run to the outside and then up. It's an out and up. Whitaker sees it, as does Pyle. And neither one makes a play, but because of the coverage, he has to throw it a little long. Todd Savers is 17 of 21 on his field goals this year. And this one's blocked. And Virginia Tech trying to cover it, and they do. 
They do it better than anybody in the country. And they just stopped another would-be scoring threat by the King. Well, we mentioned in the opening 88 blocks in 15 years of Frank Beaver here at Virginia Tech. That's the way they play it. Right in just, the middle of the pile. was just a low kick. Yeah, Sometimes the reputation of a defense or a special teams can affect the kicker. He just kicked that ball low. So, Virginia Tech's offense takes over again. Pretty close to the same spot they had it last time. 88 in 15 years. You're going to add another. No. Deep middle's open. He's got his man. Curtis in the fullback all the way down to the 33-yard line. How about that? Ferguson, one of their top receivers when he comes out of the backfield. Here he is, the fullback. He's going to go straight down the middle of the field after the play-action fake. The safeties are helping on the outside. And this is simple. Look at this. He's got the linebacker beat Johnson. I mean, Williams, D.J. Williams right down the center of the field. 42 yards. The fullback is the second leading receiver for the Hokies. That's his 25th catch, the most ever by a fullback in Virginia Tech history. Now they go to the ground game, and Jones takes it down near the 25. And Virginia Tech's got something going. Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, says we just want to get through the first quarter without any big turnovers, without any big bad things happening to us. Well, you've had a fumble all by your offense, and you've had a field goal blocked, and now you've had a big play against you on the uh, by the Hokie offense. So it remains to be seen whether they get out of the first quarter. Second down, four. Here's a little option. Jones dropped the ball. Goes and retrieves it, gets a block from his quarterback, and he's off to the races. Jones inside the 20 and got leveled at the 15-yard line. He can provide some excitement. Jones was in high school last year at this time. He was one of the top recruits in the nation, and he chose Virginia Tech, makes a mistake, and then shows you the raw ability that he has. And then he meets <laughs> Mr. Reed. How about Grant Knoll's block on William Joseph? I like that. Yeah, I like that. First down, 10-yard pickup on the broken play at the 15-yard line. Both wideouts to the top of your screen. Wants to come back the other way out of the backfield again, and he overshot his fullback. Pretty good coverage that time by Miami. They stayed with him. Well, this is a formation they liked two weeks ago against Virginia. They put both wide receivers to the right and play action and threw the fullback back to the short side of the field. Caught a touchdown pass on that one, did Ferguson. Here's what Virginia Tech's offense has done inside the 20 this year. They are at the 15-yard line, second down and 10. 4-23 to go first quarter. No score. Two big plays by the Hokies, one by their defense, one by their special teams. Miami comes with a blitz and jumps in, and Noel takes a knee. And that'll make it second down and about five. Joseph and Walters are the guys that got the biggest head start, I think, on the interior for Miami. Dead ball, offsides, defense, contact foul, five yard penalty. Miami is Miami's all fired up. You know the defense hasn't done much. They they want to do something. They want to be aggressive, and uh, I, cadence is a great way to pull them off sides. Miami's had three shutouts this season. Virginia Tech's had four shutouts this season. Two of the best defenses in college football. They fake the toss. They give it to Ferguson, and he gets down close to the first down. Jared Ferguson, boy, that's a tough kid. 5'9", came in as about 180-pound tailback. Now he's a 220-pound fullback. Yeah. <laughs> Gained 40 pounds. He was a walk-on when he first got here. And for that, they gave him the Excalibur Award, which is a uh, trophy they started to present about the year 2000. And it's for the guy who gets in the weight room and is the best at strength and conditioning. And I'd say, while well, he's still 5'9", he's a lot stronger. That sword that you get for that award is taller than he is. Third down and short. 
Jones trying to take it outside probably shouldn't have Jamal Green the offensive end stayed with him and drops him for a loss and that'll bring out the field goal unit for the Hokies I think if Jones just takes this straight up Bobby gets the first down well I don't think you want to try and, and do this against Miami and their speed because uh, if, if you start inside you, there's no time to go back outside because of the quickness of those linebackers. Carter Warley will try a 27-yard field goal. Kick down the way. And it's Virginia Tech on the board first. Miami normally scores first and then hardly ever loses. It goes the other way on their home turf. They turn a block field goal on one end into their own field goal on the other. Mahler up to kick, and Johnson and Gore back deep breaking. This is a dandy. Out of the back of the end zone. No play on that one. So Miami will work from the 20-yard line. Swanee and Bob and I thought we were going to be in overcoats and gloves, and it's sunny in about 62. It's unbelievable out here. As nice a football day as we have seen all season. Miami has to be careful now offensively that they don't lose their confidence because they've had two drives. They've moved the ball well on both drives. The first ended in a fumble. The second, 10 plays and a blocked field goal. So they moved the ball, but yet we look up on the scoreboard and we say, well, we don't have any points. That's right. Pick up a three, second down and seven at the 23. Let's see if Dorsey puts it up. He wants to. He got some pressure and he overthrew Johnson. Very seldom does he get touched. That was not a sack, but he got hit and it affected his throw. Well, that's exactly what uh, Frank Beamer, Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator, they want people in his face, make him move around. That's Colas 99 that had a mitt on him. And that's what they want. Third down. Three wide outs for the Canes. And Dorsey will work from the gun. Here they come. Dorsey fires incomplete intended for Kevin Beard. Well, what they want to do is get after Dorsey. He is the center of this offense and put pressure on him. The only game the Hurricanes have lost in the last two years, Dorsey up at the University of Washington didn't play very well. So Miami's got a kick, Freddie Capshaw, to kick to Andre Davis. And he's a dangerous one. School record holder in punt returns. He'll have to wave at this one, though. Nice kick. Takes a fair catch at the 35-yard line. Cornell now in at the tailback spot over the Hokies. And they work with good field position. Their own 35. Noel may have changed things up. He drops to throw. Getting some heat. Got the pass away, and it's complete. Noel took a shot. From Chris Campbell on the blitz, but Emma Johnson made the catch. It's a smart play by Grant Knoll because he saw Miami in single coverage on the outside. And when you can get that with either one of these receivers, they both have speed. It just gets it off before Campbell lowers it. So a pickup of nine, second down in the yard. <laughs> Burnell, and he's got the first, and he's got more. Oh, boy, he got form tackle at the end of it, but he got a first down. James Lewis made the hit. It could be plays like this that could wake up Miami defensively if that's what they need. Lewis is in the secondary, number 23. Vilma gets blocked right there in the, in the hole. And it's Lewis who comes up, and it's tackles like that. It could uh, wake up this Miami uh, defense. Virginia Tech and Miami's end of the field again, though, at the 48-yard line. Davis in motion now sets up in a slot. Here comes a blitz. They fake the end around, and that's going to take too long to develop exactly. when you got a guy like William Joseph. Oh, for sure. You can't do that against this. Against These linemen don't see all that other stuff. All they see is <laughs> upfield. They are coming upfield. Joseph and uh, Wilfork and the ends, Williams. I mean, they just coming upfield. They don't, 
you say, ah, somebody else taking care of that other stuff. I'm getting upfield. Last six games, 21 sacks to go with the takeaways, and Joseph is the leading sacker. That's his 10th of the year and his 19th tackle for loss. He leads Miami's defense in both categories. Second down and 20 now. Draw play. But now trying to weave his way around and got to the 45-yard line. That's about it. And that's a good call against a, a defense like Miami's and a defensive line that likes to get up yep. field. Because the two ends almost take themselves out of the play. And you show pass and then run a little draw. That's a good play. Virginia Tech by a field goal as we start the second quarter at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew with you on a very, very important day in college football, and uh, this one part of it. Miami, with a win, would cap a perfect regular season and go to the Rose Bowl to play for the national championship. But they're behind by three as we open the second quarter. No, across the middle, it's intercepted. Picked off by Miami, and Philip Buchanan's got this one. Buchanan has been outstanding this year, and especially in the last three or four ball games. That's Miami's 41st turnover takeaway, I should say. They lead the nation in takeaways. This was a bad choice. The fullback was wide open out in the flat with no coverage. So the Canes come up with one. There's the takeaway story. And Buchanan, that's his fifth interception of the season. And off to Portis. And Portis got to midfield, just across midfield. Let's check in with Swanick. Well, Brad, you talked about the weather. I checked the farmer's almanac. It was supposed to be on December 1st, 2001, a foot of snow. I wore a turtleneck. I've got a jacket and hat in the trailer. But as you look down and you see our thermometer, it's 74 <laughs> degrees. Oh, wow. I knew it was nice. I didn't know it was that nice. Absolutely perfect. Dorsey on first down. What a catch by Shockey again, the tight end. And he's all the way to the 33-yard line. Swanee, I wanted to ask you about this in the first quarter. There's some good tight ends out there. This kid's hands, I think, separate him from everybody else. They're unbelievable. When we talked to him in Miami, Bob Greasy looked at his hands, and he's got a huge set of mitts. <laughs> I mean, they're unbelievable. So when he wraps his hands around the ball, it's hard for anybody else to get in there and take it away from him. Well, the Plus, other, he runs great routes. Yeah, and he wants the ball. He just wants every pass thrown to him, and he's a good runner after he catches it. Those were his stats coming in. He's got three catches already today. Dorsey, plenty of time. Long ball for Sands overshot him in fact it went out of the end zone couldn't get a play on it Eric Green nice coverage by the sophomore corner single coverage on the outside pressure on Dorsey in the pocket Cobb is 28 he's not getting there but there's somebody hitting him Frank Beamer says you know Dorsey's a tough kid at least we think he is we don't know <laughs> nobody's ever hit him yeah but this is that, 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 that you've got it any good defense is going to get, and if you don't sack him, just get there. Knock him down. Put your hands on him. Make him know that you're there. He hit his first six. He's 9 of 14. Here's Portis on a sweep. He got the corner. He got the first down, and he's out of bounds at the 18-yard line. This is the thing that's so impressive about the Miami offense. Everybody talks about Dorsey in the passing game, but they actually run as well as they pass. They've scored. 24 touchdowns rushing and only 23 passing. So great balance and great running behind that offensive line. They average 210 yards on the ground per game. And that run netted him a first down. Portis has 46 yards already in the first half. He gets the call again. And Portis inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Ben Taylor. The linebacker made another stop. Our aerial views, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Goodyear providing aerial coverage of the world sporting events for more than 75 years. Great day to be in the sky. Great day to be in the press box. Great day to be in the stands. It's a beautiful one. Great day to be in a college football game. There you huh? go. Got single coverage down here at the bottom of the screen and the top. Second quarter was big last week for the Canes. Dorsey, it's Shockey again, and he's got a touchdown. 
Jockey the tight end on a crossing pattern. His fourth catch of the day. This one's good for a score. 14 yards. Rob Jabzinski, the offensive coordinator in the booth, clears it with the fullback and then brings the tight end behind him for the touchdown. And when he gets the ball, Bob, he doesn't break stride. Dorsey lays it in there perfectly, and he's allowed to keep that momentum, turn it upfield, and ball through a couple of guys. Sabres for the point after. And he's got it up and good. And this is number one Miami. Trying to get to the big show yep. if they win today. Noel from the shotgun. Has time. Zips it out, but no gain on the play. Great play by Marquise Fitzgerald, the nickelback. All right, John. Punt coming up here. Buchanan slipped the last time, and this one's taken away from him by a teammate, Eddie Reed. And Ed Reed gets the return into Hokie territory. <laughs> Buchanan sitting there, and now he's going to come over and say, Edward, you didn't hey, tell me you were going to do that. Edward Reed is the senior, and he is the, uh, the senior guy back there. He'll take him if he wants to. <laughs> he's the leader of the group. Here's Buchanan, and all of a sudden Reed says, I got it. Reed is one of the three finalists for the Thorpe Award. Dorsey, nice play fake, throws on the run. Got his other tight end this time, Robert Williams. And Williams got about five. So the tight end's a big part of the hurricane attack today, and it's working well. Yeah, great, for great field position for Miami. Offensively, the last two possessions they've had the ball. This one starts inside the 50-yard line of Virginia Tech. been a season-long story for Miami. Their field position has been excellent all year long as compared to their opposition anyway. Dorsey throws high but caught. Beard gets it and he's got a first down near the 35. Let's check in with Lynch. Brad, Brian McKinney, they've been working on the sideline. It is his left knee that was hurt in the play. The doctors on the sideline checked him. They checked his right knee to see how much movement was there, and then his left knee, and they were the same. And so what they did is just asked him to walk in. They were going to take him to the locker room and check it out further, but so far he's still on the sideline. Well, sometimes you get hit from behind, and it just scares you. And you're down for a little bit, and then you realize it's nothing real serious. I'm not saying that this is that case, but sometimes that's the case. That's what you would hope for for Miami. Again, if you're just joining us, Brian McKinney, uh, one of the finalists for the Atlin Trophy, too, has uh, rolled up on there. It was not intentional. It was one of the uh, defenders, Colas, trying to make a tackle on uh, Portis and just flew right into his lower legs. And when you're working on those legs, it's like working on a cell phone tower. I mean, he's a big guy. I can imagine a cell phone tower. <laughs> I don't know. Second down and three. Dorsey. Going to go deep for Sands, who didn't look up. And incomplete, Darnell Wilds was covering. Well, one of the things that Dorsey does a good job of is just getting rid of the ball. You see a lot of quarterbacks take a sack, hold the ball too long in the pocket. He dropped back, held the ball long enough, and he says, I got to do something with it. I know I got a guy going deep. I'll just throw it away deep. And now third down. And three, the crowd comes to life for the Hokie defense. If I'm not a part of that Hokie defense, I'm wondering where number 88 is. Miami's going to take a timeout. Dorsey upset that he didn't get to play quick enough. And he'll take a timeout with 7.08. Brian McKinney's mom, Michelle, in the crowd here at Virginia Tech and uh, kind of made her way down, I think, to see how her baby boy was doing. They put a sleeve on his left knee, on Bryant's left knee, and uh, hopefully he's going to be able to come back. One of the things she did, she has a cell phone. I saw her. I think she's sitting in the stand. She can't hear our broadcast, but I think she called home probably to hear if we had any information about her son's injury. I love that communication technology. Najee Davenport with a first down run, straight up the middle. And that's what the timeout was for. Are we going to treat this as a short yardage situation, or are we going to treat it as a third and five, a third and medium? They needed to get the first down. They picked it up. Now they go back to their regular offense at the 21-yard line. 
Najee doesn't get a lot of carries. He's good as a receiver out of the backfield. But he goes straight ahead and plows for the first down. It's only his 23rd carry of the year. First down at the 21. Gore is in a tailback now. Broke one tackle, but not the other two. Whew. Man, he got pasted by Whitaker. You're going to see some action from over to the right side. These defense are defensive backs. When that ball starts away, they're going to come back. And, and there are no, no white shirts back that way, Frank. Nope. Whitaker and Daniels were waiting for him. And uh, Hokey down is Jim Davis, their defensive end. Brad and Bob, while we have a moment, I, I think this serves uh, to prove a very important point, something we've watched about the Miami football team. In the fourth quarter of most games, their starters have been out, and their backups have had a chance to play. Some people were concerned they thought Miami might be running up the score in the last couple of ball games, but they got their backups in and quality time to play good football. Now with a guy like Brian McKinney stepping out, those kinds of moments in the football game are important to the Miami program because now instead of having a very green backup coming into the play, they've got a young man who comes in with game experience and they don't lose a stride. They don't have to then shorten their offensive game plan for a substitution. And Vernon Carey, it's not like they lose any size either. He's a 265 pounder. And Jim Davis is up. And he's limping off. He, he eats with the big eaters, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he does. He's one of the buffet busters. And here's Davis. Looks like his right wrist, I think, but he's a sophomore defensive end. And Adibi will come in and take his spot on that defensive front for the Hokies. Gore actually lost a yard. It's second down and 11. We've got 635 left first half. 7-3 Miami. Nice play fake. Dorsey throws a strike. Oh, they're going to say he's out of bounds? Yes, I guess so. Andre Johnson made the catch, but he's wide over there. Ran out of real estate on the far side of the field. Both wide receivers having their way with single coverage on the outside. Take a look at this. Well, it's hard to tell yeah. from that he, look. He was rolling and uh, had his left knee down, but I guess his feet were out of bounds and hit first. So now they go to the three wide receiver set on third down and 11. Here comes the heat on Dorsey. The right play is called, though. Portis all alone, and Portis inside the 10. It's first and goal. Oh, there was nobody outside. I mean, Virginia Tech doing the blitz thing, single coverage on the wide receivers, and a little screen pass. He just got to slide out here to the right side. They're bringing the blitz. That's Welsh just runs by him, 34, the linebacker. Now, there's nobody out here. There's nobody out here to stop him. Dibla finally snuck out, helped him get a block right there, and that sprung him to the first and goal. Portis on the handoff. Portis inside the five, touchdown. Nice blocking, and Clinton Portis takes it in for the Kane. Seven-yard touchdown for Portis. And that is his 10th rushing touchdown of the year. He really knows how to follow his block. He does. He? he does. And when, when there's no more blocking, when the blocking runs out, he is tough to catch. He's quick and he's fast. Extra point is good. So the Hurricanes spotted the Hokies' uh, field goal, but they've scored two touchdowns now, including this one. Romberg is the center. Gonzalez is 73 who moved over to the left side. Look at all the Hokies out there. They're overrunning it. Portis sees it and cuts back against the grain. So only a 47 yard drive that time too again. There's Portis's numbers. Already over a thousand coming into this game. And trying to get his seventh or rather eight hundred yard game of the year. He's got seven already. That drive of Miami started on their 47 yard line of Virginia Tech. Short field. We talk about it all the time. Took them only nine plays and two and a half minutes to score. 
So it's 14 to 3. The Canes. Welcome back to Lane Stadium, where in the second quarter, the Hurricanes increased their lead to 17 thanks to place kicker Todd Seavers, who connected from 34 yards out and then again from 43. With the score now 20 to 3 Miami, we resume our coverage with the ensuing kick in the final seconds of the first half here on ESPN Classic. Seavers going to pooch this thing high. Wayne Ward, a backup running back, takes it at the 13. And Ward gets out at the 29-yard line. So just a few seconds left for Virginia Tech. And we assume they're not going to try anything very fancy here. They'll go to the locker room and try to regroup and uh, make some adjustments and figure out, for one thing, they've got to get Miami on a longer field. Capital One halftime shows 11 seconds away. Probably a play, maybe two. And then John and Terry will join us and uh, bring you up to date on all the other games. Keeping track of that uh, Virginia-Penn State game. A look ahead to the Ducks and the Beavers and uh, the Longhorns and the Buffaloes. All that at halftime. First down, just a toss sweep. And Brunel goes out to about the 34. And everybody's going to head to the locker room. First half has gone Miami's way. The first quarter did. Halftime, Miami leading 20 to 3. Virginia Tech had a three point lead at the end of the first quarter. Second quarter belonged to Miami. Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy back here in the booth, swanning on the sidelines. Only 87 yards of offense for Virginia Tech. They got to get something going. They do, and, and, and that's the weakness of their uh, entire team is their offensive production. So what they need to do to help their offense is come up with some turnovers or get a score from their special teams. Well, they got the turnovers early and blocked the field goal, but as you can see, 87 yards. 63 of that came on their one drive, and 42 of that came on one play, the pass to the fullback down the middle. Other than that, it was all Miami. Grant Knoll suffered two interceptions. Three completions, two interceptions. And uh, not a good first half for uh, anybody on the offense for Virginia Tech. Sabres will kick. The Hokies get it first to open the second half. Back deep, Richard Johnson. And six yards deep, he won't bring it out. He'll take a knee. So Virginia Tech, as has been the case for most of the day, has to start from the 20 or inside. Our Morgan Stanley storyline. Kenny Dorsey, fairly efficient, 16 of 29. The touchdown was to Shockey. Reed and Buchanan both have interceptions. And Kevin Jones been held to 29 yards on 11 carries. That blocked field goal led to their field goal. And uh, as Bob was talking about, Grant Knoll has thrown two to one team and three to his own guys. Let's see how he starts the third quarter. They'll do it on the ground. Jones straight ahead, knifes for about five. Jamal Green made the tackle. And what what the Hokies have to do coming out is, all right, don't get excited. We're 17 points down, but we can't be anybody other than who we are right. offensively. We got to do what we do best. The thing I think they need to do is get the ball out to Andre Davis, their big play guy on the outside. He has barely touched it, except in kick return situations today. Here's the option. Hitch to Jones, the blocker in front, and Jones has a sideline. He's got great speed. Inside the 40, makes a cutback on Reed. Reed stays with him, but he's all the way to the 20-yard line. There's the play of the day for Virginia Tech. They get their big plays in different ways. This is the option going to come right down the line. Green takes the quarterback, and there's nobody else there. There's a great block inside. Solkowski gets a nice block on the inside linebacker. Ferguson, the fullback, led the way. There's a block right here that sets up the whole play on Slokowski. 56-yard run. And first down at the 20. He gets it again. And he's got five more. So this has been... The Kevin Jones show to open up the third quarter. 
Brad, that last play was exactly what Frank Beamer was talking about getting done as he came onto the field at halftime. He said, we had opportunities in the first half that we did not take advantage of, and we made mistakes. So in the second half, we have to just continue to take our shots. If we take our shots and make something good happen, we're not out of this ball game. That's exactly right. When you walk in that locker room, you want to say, hey, we tried everything, we emptied our saddlebags, and we got beat. But you don't want to not try something. You want to... Give it all you got. Two minutes ago, I was saying only this many yards for Kevin Jones, and now he's got 66 yards the last three times he's touched it. And the clock was winding down, and Noel has to take a timeout here. The Hokies threatening here early in the third quarter after the 56-yard run by Kevin Jones, who's closing in on 100 for the day. That was the longest play given up by the Hurricanes all year, by the way. Second down and six. At the 15. Uh, Jones trying to slip it outside. And he's not going to get much out of this one. Maybe two. Chris Campbell, the linebacker, waiting for help from his friends, makes a stop, and it's third down. It's imperative that Virginia Tech get something out of this drive. It would be big for them if they got seven and got back to uh, within 10 points. Chevy Trucks sponsoring our first and 10. And the line you can see is just inside the 10. That's where they need to get. And they're 0 for 6 on their third downs today. Third down and four. Big play. Noel wants a throwback screen, but it's tipped and it's intercepted. Picked off by William Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. Jamal Green's the guy that tipped it. Joseph picks it off, and there goes the scoring threat. This is the 12th different guy that's intercepted a pass for Miami this year. Going to roll this way and try to throw back. It's a throwback screen. Everybody rolls this way. Now you got to get it back there, but that's just great awareness by a defensive tackle that knows what's going on. This is a quarterback's responsibility. That when you roll over, now you turn back. Now you don't know what you're going to see, but you've got to get the ball around or over some way. Get it back to him. What is fumble? Scooped up by Taylor, his second of the day. So the Hokies get it right back. Turnover for turnover. Ben Taylor, the lunch pail man, has got his second fumble recovery. And he just gets whacked by a couple of the Hokie tacklers. Looks like Pew number 71 gets his helmet right in there. Pew and Daniels. And knocks the ball out. So they only lost about four yards in one play on that change of possession. Now they got a first down at the 19. Jones trying to find a hole. Vilma drags him down, but he got four tough yards. Well, it's not surprising that we've got two of the top teams in the nation at taking the ball away. Miami came in with. Uh, but they have 40. Now they've got 43 takeaways. Virginia Tech had 32 coming in. Now they've got two. Miami's turned it over twice. Virginia Tech has turned it over three times. Second down at the 20, at the 15-yard line. Second and six. Here's the toss. Jones got a block from his wideout, but he slips, and Vilma's there to make sure That's he's not going anywhere. Great play by Vilma, the middle linebacker. Nobody's going to get to him. Everything was set up, but nobody got on Vilma. Here's Vilma here. The ball's going to be tossed. <clears throat> and there he is. Mano y mano. <laughs> Andrew Williams, the guy that's down right now for Miami, says a little break in the action. Here's a ground level look. Ferguson trying to get a linebacker, and Vilma's got him collared. And it's a third down and six that's upcoming. But again, Andrew Williams, the defensive end, junior out of Tampa, is the guy that's down. Andrew Williams has been bothered with a knee injury the last few weeks. That's what they're working on, too, I think, Bob.
it's the knee or the ankle, Brett. Um, you know, I'm standing on the sideline looking at it. They were just kind of flexing that uh, ankle, maybe just to check out the knee. He has a brace, as you can see, on that right knee, the injury you were talking about before. Yeah, he yep. is a he is a disruptive guy. He is he's a junior college player playing this year for the first time for Miami. When Jamal Green and Cornelius Green, the two starters at defensive end last year, were hurt at the beginning of the year, Williams and uh, McDougal, the other defensive end, just took over, and the Green brothers, or the Green boys, and not brothers, <laughs> couldn't get their positions back. Third down. This has been touchy for Virginia Tech. Their third downs have been awful. Their passing game in that situation is even worse. And it's third down and six for Noel. He's got to complete a pass. Nope, doesn't have to. Draw play. Burnell cuts outside. He's got the first. And he's awfully close to the end zone. They didn't throw it. And Burnell took him down. It's first and goal. Burnell waited around, waited his turn. And when Lee Suggs got hurt early in the season, Buchanan's limping off to the sideline. Boy. Suggs got hurt early in the year. Burnell got the opportunity to play. So Burnell stays in there behind Ferguson, full house backfield. And a power eye, first and goal at the two. <laughs> Burnell, a tough one yard. And a flag at the top. Campbell made the tackle, and we wait to see on the penalty. They're saying offsides against Miami, I think. To take it half the distance to the goal, still stay first down, It'll be first and goal at the one, if that indeed is the call. Offsides, defense, the penalty is half the distance to the goal, remains first and goal. Oh, in the neutral zone. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's first and goal. A yard closer at the Miami one. Ferguson, touchdown. Straight over the top for the fullback. His fourth of the year and a big, big touchdown for the Hokies. That's a huge breath of air back into this uh, Hokie football team. Now they can cut the lead down to 10 if they hit the extra point. Orley in for the point after. Easily to hold. He got it down. They got nothing good. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew in Blacksburg, Virginia Lane Stadium, where number one Miami leads 20 to 10. They got the ball back after the punt. In Hokie territory by about a yard. After Virginia Tech 49. That's the blitz. And Portis runs the other way. He gets about six yards. Here's the throw quickly out to Johnson. Johnson trying to beat Whitaker over there. Beats him for the first down. Here's Portis. And he's dropped in the backfield. Kevin McAdam says no way. Yeah, that play had no chance. They were loaded up. They had single coverage on the outside. And, and he's... he's Decided to go ahead and run it anyway, but Foster, the defensive coordinator, this is a good defense. This is a tough defense, Miami. The number one, uh, not the number three, def three offense in the nation, averaging 45 points coming in. They knew it wasn't going to be easy sledding against these guys, and it hasn't been. Second and 13. Here's a stretch to Portis on the short side of the field. Now he's trying to cut back, and they won't let him. Coles Colas makes the tackle. Colas is not a big guy, six footer, 233. I guess he's a he's a diet Colas. Uh, yeah, the 99 you, makes you think that he's a pretty big guy, but uh, he's not at all. He makes a nice stop on Portis. He's and that's third and long again. He's six foot and about 230 pounds. He's one of those small, quick defensive ends. Miami plays it conservatively, and Portis takes it to the 25-yard line, where it's going to be fourth down and three. About a 42-yard field goal. And Sievers has already hit one in that range today. 
Now, talking with Frank Beamer yesterday, he says we don't care who's on the field, if it's defense or special teams, it's an opportunity to score. This is an opportunity to block a kick. Seavers got it away, and he got it. So he hits from 34, 43, and now 42. And what, a, what a weapon he is for an offense that was struggling, but yet to get some points out of the drive. Total points in a season. It's a new record. It beats the team that scored 469 last year. So Miami has put up 471 points on Larry Coker's rookie season as head coach. And that was a big field goal. Every three you can get against this defense, you better take it. An amazing statistic in the last 16 years when they lead after three, only twice have they lost. And Miami now is 15 minutes away from punching a ticket to Pasadena to play for the national championship. But they are in a dogfight. They're in a hokey fight. 15 to go. Virginia Tech's got the ball, trailing by 13. No pump fakes one way, tried to come back to a screen. And Miami did a pretty nice job of blowing that up, but it wasn't a good throw. Lane Stadium's under construction here, you can see on the uh, near side right there. And it's going to be beautiful when they get that done by next year. It'll be a great place, I think, probably to watch a football game from down there in that end zone. And there's a few people over there watching the game Looks under like the a construction. Lot of, a lot of dirt and stuff. Yeah. Man. Oh, and look what you find when you look hard enough sometimes. His yeah, own private suite. There's going to be 15 of these when they finish, and it, uh, there's going to be 63,000 people that can fit into this stadium. This will increase it, and they've got some other plans, but right now I'm with the construction crew, and we're hanging out. Just hanging out with the guys. The boys, you guys having a good time back here? Yeah. Ah. Party on, dude. Here's the punt. <laughs> Buchanan from the 30. Trying to reverse his field. Going to have an illegal block, I think, as Phillips running a long ways for nothing. Comes down at the 37-yard line, and the flag's over here on the near side of the field where he made his cutback. And one of his buddies trying to spring him free. I'm sure that's going to be the call. Yeah, I think it's going to be against Miami. Interesting talking to Frank Beamer yesterday, who is yeah, holding against Miami. Frank Beamer, who has really uh, reinvented special teams over the last uh, five, ten years. The things that he had to say, the techniques that he taught, how he selected his guys for the different positions on special teams, really interesting. Early in the fourth quarter, Miami leading 23 to 10. And they have the ball at the 27 yard line, their own 27. Gore in a tailback for the Canes. Dorsey to the air on first down. Jones and hit him in the one and he dropped it. We saw that happen to Andre Johnson earlier. Well delivered ball, but incomplete. And what, what's happening is Virginia Tech's getting everybody up around. Dorsey to stop the run. You got single coverage outside. Jones is so excited he wants to catch it and turn up, and he's not catching it first. And these corners, Austin and Whitaker, are doing a nice job of making tackles out there in the open field, too. Second down at 10. Gore. Maybe a yard. That's about it. Three wide outs for Dorsey here. Crowd coming to life on third and nine. Here comes the blitz. Dorsey hangs in, throws, and he threw a strike this time to Beard. Oh, is that good? And That's two guys good. were right there, and he split it right between them. Flag down. It's, it's against Miami. It's a lineman downfield. I don't know why there'd be a lineman where that flag was thrown when either. the pass came 40 yards over this way and the flag was thrown on the other side of the field. Ineligible receiver downfield offense. Receiver was covered on the there line you go. of scrimmage. Was covered. Five yep. yards from the previous spot remains third down. It was Shockey. It wasn't uh, lineman. It was Shockey. They covered Shockey. Yeah. That's that's a poor alignment. Shockey is the tight end. The flanker on the outside of him was on the line of scrimmage. You have to be off the line of scrimmage for Shockey to, to be eligible. That's it. Small things like that will drive a coach nuts. Dorsey hasn't found Shockey since that touchdown Here they come. in the second quarter. 
And Dorsey runs into an open field and finds Beard again. And Beard down the sideline didn't step out of bounds. Yes, he did finally, but at about the 47-yard line of Virginia Tech. You talk about the inability of Dorsey to be able to move. He can do it here and shows it. Beard goes down, single coverage because of the blitz. Now he gets the ball, and he doesn't make the tackle, Austin. Well, Bob, you and I talked about that earlier, about the undefeated seasons, when you have to just do something you don't normally do. And while Dorsey may not scramble and run well constantly, this time he comes up with a thick play to get him out of a hole. 31-yard play, in fact. Two tight ends set, one of them Williams on the move. Back to the ground, go to Keynes, and it's Portis in the open field. That's speed. Clinton Portis, first down run, he got 11 more. This is a drive that could kill Virginia Tech because it's field position. And their offense, even if they do get the ball back, they can't, not capable of going 80, 90 yards. Right. Portis is going to start over here and cut back and go the other way. That's Bibla, 65. Now he just gets outside and just makes the yardage that he can get out of it. Got it down to the 36-yard line. First down. Clock running under 13 minutes. Gore takes over the tailback spot. And he'll get the call. The freshman breaks it inside the 30. And down to the 24, and he's got a first down. 12-yard ramble there. He is not an easy tackle. And we got a timeout taken by the Hokies. And we'll take a timeout as well. And now just 12 and a half minutes away, and then they can set up shop in Pasadena. That's what's at stake. Dorsey, play action. Throws incomplete. Yeah, good coverage. He wanted to go to Shockey, and he was covered. An outside receiver was covered as well. He just threw it away. Good decision making is probably the top quality of any quarterback can have. So a second down and 10 from the 24. Any kind of score on this drive by Miami is going to look big because even if it's just a field goal, then you're talking about a Virginia Tech team that is struggling offensively, having to have two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Yeah. And that ain't likely the way things are going. Okay, he on the carry. It's, it's so tough to run against nine and ten guys at the line of scrimmage. But Miami is continuing to do it because it's the right thing to do. They don't need more points. They need they need field position now. They need to secure the football. Don't take any chances. You've got a team that does not have a good offense, a strong offense. Only way they can hurt us is if we help them. A turnover or a special teams play, something like that. Otherwise, everything's in Miami's favor right now. Third down and eight. Portis. And three wide receivers. Here comes everybody. Dorsey scans the field, throws, tipped and incomplete, almost brought down. Beard at a half step on Larry Austin, but it's incomplete. He almost caught this ball, probably should have, but I think he may have been looking back into the sun. Dorsey looks the other way and then comes back. Watch this. Almost. Hey, I, it's, ooh, boy, I want to tell you. You're absolutely right, Bob. Right yeah. down this corner, the sun is tough. Yeah. 40-yard field goal attempt. And how about Seavers today? Officially 39-yarder. You know, you can't, you talk about having an undefeated season. There are times when you're going to need a field goal kicker to put it through for you. And he's delivered all day long. He, he had his first one blocked and then put four in a row together. And, and he's a great story. Seavers is a diabetic and most of the time, he wears an insulin pump. He does not wear it, told me before the Penn State game. He doesn't wear it during the game because it's, it's expensive, and he's afraid it'll break in the football game, so he doesn't put it on. But just before the West Virginia game, October 25th, his insulin got a little bit off. He was actually in the hospital a day before the football game, trying to get the insulin balance just right, came out of the hospital and played in the football game. He's a tough kid. And he's been a great asset for this football team. And with all that stuff happening, he's not afraid to stick his nose in. He's one of the top tacklers on the special teams. He's not afraid to hit somebody. But he just hit a big, big 39-yard field goal. So it's 26 to 10. That capped a 51-yard drive in nine plays over three minutes. 
Now Todd, the guy we just talked about, has got it teed up. Richard Johnson is back deep. <laughs> this one should be returnable for Johnson from the four. And he got himself a little alley. And there's the kicker coming over to make the hit, along with Buchanan. It's nice timing on the return. They have the opening there when the return guy gets through the hole. So a nice return and good field position, but now it's up to the Virginia Tech offense to have to get something going. Beamer says we just don't choose the fastest guy to return kicks, but a guy that can run and he has some kind of feel for the timing of the whole thing. Same way with covering punts. Not the fastest, but somebody that can shed blocks and get down there. At the 43, first down. Knowles only one of nine for one yard and three interceptions since the first quarter. And the over shot up, oh, flag flies in. I didn't think that was a ball that was even close to being catchable, but it uh, looks like we're going to have an interference back there. Lewis and Rump were both back there with the intended receiver. When the field judge throws the flag, he is in the center of the field. Normally he calls things that are in the center of the field, but this one he threw and the uh, back judge on the side did not. Pass interference, defense, 15 yards success in the previous spot, automatic first down. I thought this ball was thrown so far inside that there would not be an interference because he had no play to catch it, but I guess because of the bump, you don't see them the ball in the picture, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm just surprised that they haven't thrown the ball down the field to Davis more often. Yeah, me too. I am surprised by that, guys. But you know what? It's been physical downfield. I've seen plays where I thought a flag should have been thrown all afternoon, and the officials kept it in their pocket. So I'm questioning that last call. First down by penalty at the 42. Reverse. Here comes an end around. And it's Richard Johnson. And Miami stays home. And they make McDougal the stop. Again? McDougal, how about that defensive end? Just says, you know what? I know what I'm supposed to do here. I'm going to make the hit, and he did. Outside in Lane Stadium, we have 10:35 remaining in the ball game. Play action. Noel sets up deep middles, wide open. Got his tight end inside the 30, and still driving guys is Slokowski, and he's to the 15-yard line. Not so slow after all. He might have slow in his name, but. Got a little giddy up on that one. Got it down to the 15. It's a play action, so it's going to hold Williams. DJ Williams, the tight end, is going to be right in the center of the field. Slokowski is not one of your favorite targets. Only three receptions coming into the game. And that's a big one, moving the ball inside the 20-yard line. Down at the 15, first and 10 for the Hokies. Jones, great cut. Jones down to the five. Boy, what a move he put on in the backfield. What Bob Tech is looking at right here with less than 10 minutes to play is down by 16, and all we do a need is two scores and two two-point two, two point, uh, conversions. Watch the breaks here. Whoa, nice move. This kid's a freshman. Of course, he's played all year, so he's really not that young. He's got a lot of carries under his belt. From Chester, Pennsylvania, Bob, he was highly recruited. Matter of fact, Joe Paterno wanted him badly. And uh, Frank Beamer said, well, he doesn't always out-recruit Paterno, but this time he got his man. First and goal at the five. It's the toss to Jones with blockers in front. At the corner, still fighting. Got about two yards. Again, it was McDougal who got out there and made him adjust his run a little bit. This, this kid, McDougal, is just outstanding. Whatever it takes. A little speed to the outside, but Miami's got speed also. And there's McDougal slowing him up. Reed and Campbell and Joseph finish it off. See if they show that full house backfield at Power Eye. They will again. Remember, Ferguson has their touchdown today, the fullback. They're at the three yard line, and Noel's going to call timeout. That's a good call. You need to score a touchdown on this drive. As you can see, courtesy of our friends at Goodyear, there's fixing to be a little bit of a fight going on down there at about the goal line. It is second down and goal at the three. Ferguson Jones in the backfield. 
And it's Jones straight ahead. He stood up by Campbell. He didn't get to the end zone. Got to the one. Already Jones has had more yards rushing than anybody's rushed on the Canes this year. He's up to 160 yards or right about. Campbell made a great play because he was the only guy left to stop uh, Jones in the hole. And Jones is still down. Campbell, the last couple weeks, has really come on. How many that outside linebackers? How spot. many times have we seen the the trainers and the Four. medical people on the field today? A lot. You talk about a hard hitting game. And we hope it's just the wind. And Kevin Jones, even though you've mentioned that he is a freshman, uh, he passed to Walla for a young kid. Most. Coaches hope the running backs, when they finish after three or four years, can lift about three or bench press about 350 pounds. Well, he comes to Virginia Tech lifting 350 yeah. pounds, and he's got great leg drive. It takes an effort for three guys to stand him up here at the goal line. And I think it was just a low hitter. Well, maybe he's holding his wrist. He's holding his wrist. Last uh, game against Virginia, he had 181 yards on 37 carries, and that was the second highest total ever under a Frank Beamer coach team. The other guy also wore number seven. Michael Vick had a 210 yard rushing game against Boston College last year. Third and goal at the one. Burnell now in a tailback. And it's straight ahead. The fullback Ferguson touchdown. Linesman calls touchdown. The ball came out. And now wait a minute. Referee saying hold on a second. There is a flag in the end zone. Size, defense, the penalties are crime, result of the play, touchdown. So Burnell and out the two-point play the on two the side And they work on these two-point plays all the time in practice, so this is nothing new. Trying to see, push. Jess got in there right yeah, there. Tried to strip in. the ball from him before he got in. So whatever your best play is, you get ready for it right here because they need two and then they need another touchdown and two more. Three wide outs and a shotgun set for Noel. Everything's coming this way. Including the pass and it's good. He got it to him. Terrell Parham, two point conversion. 26-18. The Canes are not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. This is a popular play, whether college or pro, for two points or inside the five. It's close to whether he got in the in, in, in the end zone or not. I know his body was in, but is the ball in? Bob, I was standing on the goal line. Right when he made the catch, I thought the official was not going to give him the two points because the ball was clearly, from my vantage point, outside the goal line. His body was in, but the ball never made it in. Yeah, I looked uh, from, from the uh, angles that I saw. It was pretty close, but it uh, looked to me like the ball was never in. You can't tell from this one, obviously, but... He comes down. When he comes down, Bob, you see the ball was yeah. outside the line? Yeah. It never moved forward across that line. Yeah. Nonetheless, the two points awarded Virginia Tech. And, and I'll say one thing on our Nissan drive summary, capping a touchdown run by Ferguson in two-point conversion, 57 yards in just under three minutes. We've been saying all day long Grant Knowles had an awful game. When he needed to play, yes. he got a pass in there. Well, and he moved his team down, too. Remember, they had a nice kickoff return. Then he hit his tight end. Then he hit the tight end down there. He did a nice job on that drive, getting him down. Here's a line drive kick on the bounce. Andre Johnson. Johnson with a return on to the left and out across the 25, and he gets collared out of bounds at about the 27. To end our triple header Saturday on ABC Sports. Portis. Portis hammered down after a yard game. Okay, you've got, now what you've got is you've got the pressure that was not there back on Miami's shoulders because they're looking at this, they're on the road, 
The crowd's back in it. The opponent, if we give this ball up, is one touchdown away and a two-point conversion from Ty in this game. We were cruising along. We were 13 points up, 16 points up. And now, here comes that pressure back on Miami. A chance of defense from the Hokey fans. Second and nine. Play action. Dorsey wanted to go to Shockey. He got tangled up back there with Ronyo Whitaker. There's and a now a flag flies in late. The big tight end with a 5'9 cornerback. Got lost somewhere about uh, shoulder high with him. There's a look at Shockey. That jam is okay. That one is not because the ball is in the air. Pass interference against the defense. Spot foul. First down. First down Miami by penalty. Whitaker knows it too. He knows he got that last hand in there. Well, you, and, and he says it's either that or let him go down the middle of the field and right. catch a big play or a touchdown. Only the second penalty against Virginia Tech, but it gives Miami wow. a first down. Well, you've got single coverage out here on the wide receiver, and you've got like nine guys to stop the run. Run it, they will. Portis hit by Pugh first, I think, again. And House Wright, the linebacker. Bob and Brad, if Virginia Tech is able to stop them and get the ball back on offense, it is questionable whether or not number seven, Kevin Jones, will be of service to them in the ball game. He has a sprained right ACL shoulder. So he is sitting on the bench, and it's questionable as to whether he'll return in the ball game. The reason he was holding what we thought was his wrist was just to keep support on his arm. It's his shoulder that hurts. Next one. Second down to nine. Miami takes a timeout. They a guy short out there, Bob? I think he was lined up on the wrong side. No current hurricane has ever won in this field, on, on this stadium in this field. They've lost five of the last six games to the Hokies. 53,662 looking on to see if Miami can survive this game. They didn't survive that play very well. Whitaker from the backside. Makes the stop. It's third and long. They're bringing everybody. You don't see any Hokies back here. You see Whitaker coming around the edge. He's the defensive cornerback. He's chasing the play down from the backside. It's tough to run against 10 guys. He's a little guy, but he's a fighter. And his uncle, Sweet P, Pernell Whitaker, a fighter as well. Miami, third down and 10. They need this play. Dorsey in trouble. Scrambles out. Finds a man across the middle, but it's incomplete. Sands couldn't hold it. And the Hurricanes have to give it up. Dorsey probably could have run for the first down. It was 10 yards. He had that much room. Take a look. He steps up. He's forced up into the pocket. I think that 10 yards, when he saw 41 house yeah. right out there, he said, you know what? He's Maybe so I can't get it. Got and a block it. kick. They got it. They got it. They scoop it, and they're going to score it. Touchdown. Brandon Manning. Beamer ball strikes again. Eric Green is the guy that blocked it. I think he might be the injured player. Yes. He gave it up to block the kick. He got it. Manning did the rest. They still need the two points to tie the game. It's coming from the left side. Watch over here. Nobody touched him. Barely touched him. Manning get 22 yards for the touchdown. It's the second block today. Field goal earlier. Capshaw, you saw the bobble is what cost him. Bobbled it a little bit. And here's the key play right here. This to tie. Two-point conversion attempt. Noel got the last one in. He's going to throw a fade. They tie it! Ernest Wilford! No, oh. no, he dropped it! He dropped it? I he, thought he had it. He dropped it? I thought he had it. 
The officials say no. We'll get another look. Buchanan falls down, and he's standing there by himself. Buchanan's down. Oh, he did. It went right, right through his hand. Through his arms. That's a great shot by our crew. I didn't see it the first time. Oh, my goodness. Well, the pressure was back on Miami, and they got the punt blocked. And, and Frank, Frank just goes completely down. Cannot face first. believe it. What if, what if Miami's trip to a national championship game no. is on that play? It's not on that young no, man. There's, there's too much time left. But there's I'm just saying, minutes. what if the end of the season, yeah. you're living right? Yeah. There's six minutes to go. There's plenty of time to kick field goals and do a lot of things. But Miami has to come out and play aggressively on offense. Yeah, they, they can't they, sit on it. They got to throw the ball outside to the wide receivers who are single cover. Mallorette's kick is a good one. I'll tell you what, Brad, college games, momentum can change so quickly, and it's definitely wearing a maroon jersey. There was the block by Green. Manning took a perfect hop, and Brandon said, I know where I'm going. I'm going to the barn with that thing, 22 yards. They're still working on the left elbow of Green. That's the thing. That ball got kicked right into that arm. Yeah. And so they work on him. Meanwhile, Miami's got to go to work from its own 20-yard line. Six minutes left. Dorsey on first down. Shockey couldn't hang on to it. And it was Whitaker there with him again. You're on the road. You're the favorite. Shockey is the guy you want to go to. This is good coverage. Right there. Had his hand on the backside, but he didn't, didn't, didn't do anything to uh, Shockey until he knocked the ball away. Remember, Shockey caught four balls early for 60 yards and a touchdown. Nothing since. This is when big players step to the front. Dorsey on second down. Jones makes the catch, but right there is McCannon going nowhere. Nice play by the rover back, Kevin McCannon. Out of Lakeside, California. Coming into the game, we mentioned that the special teams for Virginia Tech needed to score a touchdown, and they have. Beamer said yesterday, we want to get Miami in the fourth quarter with the pressure on them. They've it's got them. that now. It's on them right now. Dorsey's second half has been one to kind of forget. He doesn't care about stats, I can tell you that. And he could probably care less about the Heisman Trophy, but he cares a whole bunch about January 3rd in California in the Rose Bowl. And he has made it very clear to us, and we've been with this team a lot this year, that that's been the team's goal, while the coaches may not have talked about it. Well, you've got single coverage on those two receivers at the top. He looks that way on third and six. Almost intercepted. Willie Pyle comes out of the pile with an incompletion. But a forced punt coming up, and then you got to watch out for the punt again. He tried to go to Dorsey, and he tried to go to Shockey, the tight end. He's double covered. There was single coverage outside. Quickly for the punt. Both teams set up in a hurry for the kick. Capshaw. Nobody back there. Davis just gets out of the way. And this is in Miami territory. It was an awful punt. Reputations of teams that block kicks. And then when you get one blocked, Capshaw didn't get it off very well at all. Only a 26-yard kick. And Virginia Tech, with five minutes left in the game, will start about the length of the football in Miami territory. Here's where the punt was blocked on the left side the time before. Now they come up the center. Do you notice Green on that play came from the same spot, didn't even use his arm, but he was still back out there. First down. Burnell, oh man, is he met in the hole? I think it's Vilma. All right, what you've got here now is the Miami defense has Walters. to come out and win it again. You know, championship teams, we're talking about teams that go undefeated. 
we came back to the defense where your offense is maybe going to have some pressure on them. They're not going to make plays, but it's a defense that says you're not going to score on us. And that's where Miami is right here. No gain on the last play. Maybe the length of the football. We'll call it second and ten. And now stays in there. Jones, remember, came out as Swanee told us with a shoulder injury. Noel to throw on second down. Flares it out incomplete. Burnell is fullback and center receiver. He and McDougal got some pressure on Noel. He got dumped by McDougal. He got McDougal. That's happened to a lot of guys this year. So now the crowd is quiet. As I mentioned, Jones out with the slight shoulder problem. And now it's third and ten, and the pressure is on Grant Noel, the quarterback. Three wideouts for him, and he'll work from the gun. Down the middle he goes. Intercepted by Reed. Second of the day for Ed Reed. And Reed is just playing center field. He was throwing the ball to the receiver short, and Reed just had center field, good vision, and dove and made the interception. The same Ed Reed who snapped the ball out of the hands of his defensive tackle to save the day against Boston College might have saved the season right here on an overthrow. 48 straight starts, a four-year senior, his 21st career interceptions. He's throwing to the guy short, and Reed sees it and intercepts. On the ground, Portis out to the 36, almost the 37-yard line. 4-10 left in the game. This game is very similar to the game they played three weeks ago against Boston College. Portis fumbled the ball, gave him an opportunity to go back. You can see him holding on to the ball there. Ed Reed's 21st career interception might have been the capper to get Miami to the West Coast, but they still have 350 to survive here. Second and five. They lead by two. Portis again. And he's got the first down. Out to the 45-yard line. Make it the 46 before McAdam can bring him down. There's going to be close calls along the way. There was one at Boston College. There certainly is one here. Nebraska had theirs against Colorado and got beat. Florida had theirs at Auburn and got beat. Texas had theirs with Oklahoma and got beat. Miami is trying to avert that. Portis now joins Otis Anderson and Edger and James, some serious company, plus he's matched the single season record of Otis Anderson with his eighth 100 plus game today, and he just rips off another 14 yards. He's their money man right now, and he's playing like it. And it's Wilkins on the left side and Romberg, the center, that's doing the, uh, the heavy work up front. Wilkins has done a nice job since taking over for Haji Razuli, who had the knee surgery that Swanee talked about earlier. And he's fit right in there, number 72. He's a big horse as well. First down, Miami. Williams in motion, flags down. Portis cutback run, and he got about six more, but again, a penalty marker on the play. Might be a procedure call. Illegal shift call against uh, Miami. Usually two guys moving at the same time. Illegal shift. Offense. Player going down to a three-point stance while players in motion. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And Bob and Brad, just a reminder to the folks at home. The clock continues to run as Miami possesses its football, and the Hokies are out of timeouts. So they don't have a chance to stop it. And it is running right now with 2.48 left. Taking their time is Miami with a two point lead. Dorsey milking the clock for all it's worth. He was looking to the receiver at the top of the screen. Because the, the defender was about 15 yards off of him and about 10 yards to the inside. All he had to do was pick it up and throw it out there if he wanted it. Najee Davenport, I think, got his knee tangled up there trying to throw a block, and he's slow to get up. And limping, hobbling to the sideline. He's one of their offensive captains. Time permitting, 
Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. John Atterry will have scores and highlights from around the country. Of course, Oregon, Oregon State, or Notre Dame, Purdue coming up for most of you. And then the Big 12 Championship at 8 o'clock tonight. Portis. And he runs into some heavy traffic that and, time. And, and Portis knows the only chance for Virginia Tech is a turnover. The only chance for Virginia Tech to win and Miami to lose this game now is a turnover and Virginia Tech pick it up and run it in. High atop Lane Stadium. That's the way you feel after you hit people for three and a half hours. Your mind <laughs> kind of starts moving on you. That's what it looks like inside your helmet after three and a half hours. Portis got to the 45. That's it. David Pugh made the hit. And the clock down to a minute. All right. You, 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 you've made your living on blocking punts for the last 10 years. Frank Beamer told us the other day you put the best people at the weakest spot who know how to block punts. He was talking about putting guys up the center because Miami had changed centers during the year. Harvey right. got hurt. Fanagrassa has been the center, but his hand has been broken. And he's been snapping. So all Miami has to do pretty much to win a national, not, to go to the national championship game is get this punt off. 31 seconds right now. Larry Coker a half minute away from a dream rookie season as a first year head coach going to the national championship. Everybody is in for Miami. Nobody is back for Virginia Tech. The snap is vital here. It's a little high but it's clean and Capshaw gets a kick away and nobody home back there. And Miami might even be able to down it before it gets to the end zone and they do. Perfectly done with 20 seconds remaining in the ball game. Hello Rose Bowl. Can almost set up that charter for Pasadena in a couple plays from now. Our director of productions Bob Toms our assistants to the producer Chris Damiani and Marvin Watson. Our associate director Margaret Gallen Dick Ellis normally in that spot. Our associate producer Steve Fennick Reggie Wade's our technical director up in the booth Joe Sullivan helping us on stats today but our head of stats is Patrick McGrath. The best spotter in the business is Clint Deans. Our game directed by Steve Bime and produced by Kevin Smolin. Coordinating producer of college football is Bob Goodrich, and the executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. It's all come down to 20 seconds on the regular season. No, in trouble. Down he goes. Is it a safety? Not quite. And who else? We got no way to stop the clock. McDougal. The game's over. They might get a snap here. You can't ground it in the end zone. The receiver's not back yet. And there's the flag with no time left on the clock. The receiver did not get back. This game is over. And the season, 11 wins in the regular season is over as well for Miami. They were threatened several times along the way. The was for illegal formation offense. Time has run out. Game is over. And Miami is perfect at 11 and 0. They're going to the Rose Bowl. Good luck to the Canes. Congratulations to Larry Coker. Good job, coach. And the staff. A perfect regular season and a tough, tough game against Frank Beamer's Hokies. And now it's on to California for the national championship for Miami. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Clinton Portis, another 100-yard-plus game, and Kevin Jones had a huge game. We hope his injury is not serious. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And you can see the emotion. Juan Gonzalez, who told us, I told him this year, we're going to find a way to win every game. They won every game. Coach, congratulations. You've, you've done it this season. You're undefeated. How does it feel? Oh, it feels great, Lynn. I'll tell you what. Uh, what we thought was going to be a great game today, a very tough game. And congratulations, too. I, I guarantee you, it's a Virginia Tech. They, they put up the, the effort we thought they would. A great effort. What will you tell your team in the locker room? 
I'll tell them congratulations. They're 11-0. They're it's very difficult to do. We knew we were going to have a good team, but I'm very proud of their effort uh, for 11 weeks. Coach, I'll see you in Pasadena. Thanks, Lynn. Appreciate it. All the fans, all the fans are over there.